So, My Hero Academia Vigilante's most recent chapter has officially been released, and let's just say that um, it ends with a big bombastic moment, both figuratively and literally, with the potential death of a character. And we'll talk more about that right after this intro. <laughs> Hey guys, how is it going? It is your boy, Monument Andrew, and I'm here to do my review of My Hero Academia Vigilantes Manga Chapter 111 titled Return of the Fist. And uh, yeah, uh, the fist does return because a whole lot of fists are sent flying in this chapter, uh, mainly from Knuckle Duster. Actually, it's all from Knuckle Duster. He's the only one throwing them hands in this fight. And uh, yeah, uh, number six is in real trouble as we saw in the last chapter. And in this chapter, we do primarily focus on Knuckle Duster and number six's fight. It is very fantastic. It is very explosive. Hey. as well as it's nothing but a brawl and weirdly enough we get some characterization of number six and how he may have just been born like corrupted or broken and he was just taken advantage of so yeah uh, there's a lot to talk about in this chapter and i will be getting to it but before i do that i'd like to ask you if you haven't done so to subscribe to my youtube channel i do my hero academia reviews as well as my hero academia vigilantes reviews and from what we're seeing my hero academia vigilantes may be coming to an end so i would say subscribe to my youtube channel so you can watch me on this journey before it ends so with that out the way let's get right into the review so, uh, the chapter starts off with Knuckle Duster with the Black Knight Sky behind him as we get the title of this chapter. And this is going to be very important because this Night Sky is going to play a role at the end of this chapter and could just be confirmation of the potential uh, death of a character. I'm not going to say that it's Knuckle Duster, but it could be number six. You'll see why at the end of this chapter. But yeah, the chapter starts off with Knuckle Duster in that uh, background of the night sky as we uh, get his inner thoughts about what happened before he laid the smack down on number six. We have his thought about how uh, he's having trouble getting to the roof because his knee is busted, which makes sense since the last time we saw Nuggle Duster, um, he was, uh, oh, I forgot what he was doing. Oh yeah, being crushed by a building. I mean, to be fair, this isn't the first time that we've seen Knuckle Duster survive something like that. Uh, you know, the attack with his daughter and the bee, uh, that should have killed him, but he survived that. So it makes sense that he was able to survive a building literally falling on him. Also, probably the fact that even though he lost his quirk, his quirk probably made his body more durable. So that probably also plays a role. But that's besides the point. Uh, the other thing is that uh, he still isn't fully healed. Like he brings up his busted knee showing that, yeah, a building falling on you, even if you are very durable is still gonna hurt you especially if you don't have your quirk so yeah pretty much the first part of this chapter is just going through the gears that are going through knuckle duster's head for how he's going to be confronting a number six to try and finish him off and how he decides that instead of using like a gun to shoot him in the head that uh he's just gonna do what he's always done and just literally beat him senseless with a full frontal punch to the face the body and that this is probably going to be the best tactic for him mainly due to the fact that number six was distracted so going from knuckle duster about to jump in and pummel number six to the ground we actually start off a flashback of number six and his backstory and yeah this was very unexpected uh from what we see from number six uh i think in this flashback we get the confirmation that number six is human technically but that he has this thing called agnosia, which pretty much means the inability to interpret sensations and hence to recognize things, typically as a result of brain damage. And that is brought up by Dr. Garaki, who says that it could have been a brain defect or that it could have been trauma in early childhood when it comes to number six. But yeah, uh, from what we see, both literally what we see and what number six sees, he is unable to recognize himself as this like, putty like kind of thing uh most likely he is, he is human because we do know that heteromorphic quirks can cause you to become like very like 
unhuman like heck we even know some of the main cast or main recurring characters that have heteromorphic quirks that have physically changed them so yeah from what we're seeing in this chapter yeah number six was this individual but that he may not have been someone that was necessarily like made by dr garaki and all for one as we see in the flashback and that he could have just been born like this and that it could have been something that he was born with or something that he obtained during childhood which ties into some core ideas about my academia when it comes to nature versus nurture, which is more impactful, just being born the way you are, like Toshinori and Deku, or how you are raised, like when it comes to other characters like Bakugo and Shoto that shapes you into the person that you are. And from what we see in this chapter, uh, number six potentially could have just been born this way with his like inability to recognize himself but that he may have been trained to probably be able to do it later on in life if it wasn't for the fact that All For One and Dr. Garaki are here. Because in this flashback, we get the confirmation that uh, Dr. Garaki was planning on using number six to be sort of like a surrogate, like a uh, child or a surrogate, uh, a pupil to All For One, meaning that this has occurred uh, before All For One met Shigaraki, but that instead of uh, it going down that path, All For One decided to be like, you know what, I could probably take him in. Uh, he's more like a lump of clay, a lump of potential. I can probably shape him into something useful. So basically, uh, All For One tried to use number six. Not trying, he actually did use number six. And even to the point of him allowing number six to choose the power that he wants, which leads to him choosing o'clock overclock to be his quirk and through that all for one is able to use his manipulation to make himself look like all for one once again confirming that the uh, o'clock vestige that has always been telling um number six what to do and how to act was actually all for one himself so you know to people that didn't know that uh, now you know so yeah this flashback is pretty much telling us that number six was just like this innocent child that was just by coincidence or by happenstance born with the inability to recognize himself and that all for one just took an advantage of him like he takes advantage of everyone so it gives number six a little bit more layer and depth to his character and makes him a little bit more uh, sympathetic but it still doesn't excuse uh, what he has done but it gives a better explanation for it. He was literally born with the inability to recognize himself, so can you really blame him for all of his actions if he was just born like this and he didn't have a choice? So yeah, it's very interesting to get a better understanding of number six. And then we immediately get out of this flashback to Knuckle Duster punching number six right in his face. Oh yeah, we're getting more action, aren't we? So yeah, Knuckle Duster is just beating the heck out of number six and we begin to understand a little bit more for why he's doing this about how guns drugs electric shocks like if i can't put him down that way he'll just escape but if i beat him up close to close i have the ability to control his senses how he's able to perceive the world it will all be under my control which just shows how intelligent knuckle duster is the fact that he was able to recognize that, oh, if I do this, this, and this, and it fails, as well as learning from his past mistakes of using a gun to try and kill number six and failing, he's like, oh, the best way that I know how I can defeat him is if I kill him with my own bare hands, or should I say knuckles? So yeah, as Knuckle Duster is just beating down on number six, he begins to ask number six, like, hey, wasn't there something that you wanted to ask me? Boom, you can ask you right now if you want, boom. I'm ready, I'll wait, boom, just hitting him like that. As you just have number six like, I I'm, I'm, as his face begins to shape back into uh, most likely the face that he was able to incorporate from Koichi, you know, before Knuckle Duster once again punches him in the face because he thinks like, you wouldn't hurt me, would you, master? I'm Koichi. And then he just punches him in the face. He just keeps punching him in the face and it never gets old. But then you just have this moment of number six just coming out and saying, why him? Why not me? In reference to Koichi, because we have to also remember, number six looked up to O'Clock and how he said that all he wanted to do was become him. He wanted to become you as he's being beaten to a bloody pulp. He puts up his hand 
and apparently he had a bullet in his hand and he tries to shoot Knuckle Duster and we cut over to Koichi, most likely hearing the gunshot. He recognizes the gunshot and he meets back up with Soga and, and he's very surprised as we cut over to the next scene where we get to see that Knuckle Duster is holding on to number six's arm and was able to avoid the attack by saying, yeah, you picked the wrong guy to idolize. As he just continuously whams and whams and whams into number six once again, as you have him having this monologue about how, uh, yeah, you idolized the wrong guy. Yeah, I had a decent quirk and I had some brains, but you know what the true value of a man is? To sum up what he basically says, it's what he left behind and how he says that uh, he's already left it behind to uh, another generation as we see Soga Rath Moyuru, uh, the police officers, including Tsukachi, as well as uh, Koichi and Potsdep, that he left something for them because they are more deserving. So he passed it down, showing how paralleling what he is doing right now is very similar to what One For All uh, does with All Might giving it to Deku passing down the flames and what's even more great is that this is something tying into like the passing the flames or passing the torches to the next generation we're seeing that happen uh from knuckle duster and that's kind of what knuckle duster has been doing throughout the entire series trying to pass down like not necessarily his mantle but some of his ideals down to koichi which koichi has incorporated some of them and as he's talking to number six and how there's only one thing that i've left you number six uh he pulls out a detonator and he's like it's my own worthless life. As he presses the detonator, as we see a whole bunch of bombs in the building, and then we cut over to Knuckle Duster's daughter, as we see that she's playing the guitar, and she just looks up to the night sky and says, oh, a shooting star. The symbolism of a shooting star in media can identify making a wish, could also mean hope, or it could mean that a star has fallen, indicating that someone is dead. Oh wait, wasn't Knuckle Duster right before, at the beginning of this chapter, standing in front of a night sky like he was also a star? Oh. Yeah, if the uh, detonation of his body didn't potentially confirm that Knuckle Duster is dead, yeah, the literal falling star from the sky about to hit the earth in a blaze of glory may be an indicator of it. So yeah, the chapter ends and Oh my gosh, this is actually a really good chapter of My Hero Academia Vigilantes. Uh, not only did we just get to see like multiple chapters of Knuckle Duster just beating the shit out of number six, uh, he was beating the shit out of number six as number six was getting more character growth, character development, character like understanding who he is as a person and that he potentially couldn't have ended out this way. He wasn't born evil. He wasn't born evil. He was just born different and then was manipulated by an evil person. So it's very interesting to get to see number six in this different light and get to see him more be sympathetic while, you know, still hating on him for the horrible things that he did. This is showing true character development and shows the true potential and the true nature of a person showing that, yeah, number six is actually a very interesting and a very in-depth and well-developed character, at least when it comes to vigilantes, so it's very cool to see that in this chapter, as well as Knuckle Duster just beating the crud out of him, and also potentially having Knuckle Duster uh, potentially die, because all in all, I think Knuckle Duster is either extremely injured or dead due to the fact that he came into the fight already injured. If he was like fully also, I'm also pretty sure he's also lost an eye as well, I'm just realizing it in this panel because uh, we see that he has a scar over his eye, which I'm pretty sure he didn't have two scars. Also, I'm pretty sure he also had two eyes. Wait, let me check. Yep, he definitely had two eyes before uh, his fight with uh, number six. So yeah, he's taking heavy damage. He still isn't fully healed. So I highly doubt that he's going to die. Uh, he probably won't, but if he does actually die, Give you props to the writer of My Hero Academia. You killed off the All Might figure before All Might was actually dead. You would have that say. You would have that over Hirokoshi. Be proud of yourself if you actually go through with it. So like I said, 
Overall, really enjoyed this chapter, really enjoyed the stuff with Knuckle Duster, his characterization, showing how much he has grown and developed as a character, as well as having these last few moments of number six also going through some form of character growth and character development, at the very least seeing the development of how he became the person that he was, and that it may not have necessarily just been all of his fault. So it's very cool to get a little bit more nuance for a character who has shown to be very crazy. So like I said, really enjoyed this chapter. Hopefully you enjoyed this chapter as well. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. And if you did, why not leave a like on it? Vigilantes may be coming to an end. And if you hit that notification to be notified whenever I upload more content like this, you won't miss out on more of my My Hero Academia Vigilante reviews. So why don't you do that? Subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, leave a comment down below on if you actually think Knuckle Duster is dead, do all that cool jazz, and hopefully I'll be able to catch you in my next video. Goodbye! Huh.